Hello, everyone. Morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone present. A very warm welcome to an ADPList and Notion original series on personal productivity and knowledge management. A lot of hellos in the chat. Hello, hello. And interestingly, I can see a lot of familiar faces here. So that's why we have been running a lot of courses for the last one, one and a half year now. Let's get started then. I'm Utkosh, Global Expansion Lead at ADPList, and I also I am the director of courses, that is, I take care of all the courses that you have been seeing around from EDPLS, from curating the curriculums, reaching out to people and then everything. Plus, in between the session, in between the series, if anything you need help with, then I am the go-to person, you can reach out to me at any point of time. And in case, if you are new to EDPLS or new to EDPLS courses, I am sure you would be knowing about Notion. But in case, if you are new to EDPLS, then we are a global mentorship platform. Spread across 160 countries as of, I would say, having 20,000 plus mentors. And it's a one-to-one -one mentorship platform. Plus, you can also take one-to-many mentorship. For example, a course like this. And all these mentorship sessions and everything is for people have to pay. There is no paywall hidden itself. There is no PNC in the world. So, yeah, let's get started. So, yeah, so let's maybe let's get started by knowing how would you rate your own Notion skills from 1 to 5? 1 is if you're very, very new to Notion and 5 is if you feel like failing. So yeah, so just start typing in from <laughs> 1 to 5 how you feel like about your Notion skills. Okay, and yeah, someone was asking about the banging noises. So, so sorry for that. There's a lot of heavy rains in my area. So yeah, the thunder effect, I would say that is a natural background noise as of now. So yeah, please be with that. <laughs> Okay, thanks everyone for sharing your Notion skill rating with us. So let's get started from Hope everyone had a great start to the week and you're pumped up to join us today. Welcome aboard to the original series where we are going to help you learn the skills and strategies to enhance your personal productivity and manage your knowledge effectively. This series features a lot of Notion certified consultants. We'll be interacting with you live and helping you into deeper realms of Notion. You will also be able to network with fellow learners, not only in the exclusive Slack, but also here in the AMEET network launch. And throughout the session, between the session, after the session, feel free to add your questions in the Q&A box just near the chat button. And we'll be taking up as many as questions as possible towards the end of the session. And for the very first session, we have Tasia Malone with us. Tasia is a percussionist Turned Digital Ops Maestro and Notion Certified Consultant. She teaches musicians and creatives how to embrace mindful productivity for a better work-life art balance. She founded Rhythm Productive to help individuals, teams, and educational institutions in the creative arts streamline digital operations with Notion and support them. Just like every brain is unique, every digital ecosystem should be unique. This is the mantra what Tasi follows. And so further, without further ado, please help me welcome Tasia. We'll be kicking this off. And uh, yeah, here we get started. Over to you, Tasia. Hi, everyone. I'm Tasia. I am in the middle of losing my voice, so I apologize in advance, but I'm going to do my best to power through. And just wanted to give you a quick hello and welcome. Uh, like Ukarsh said, I'm Tasia, like Fantasia, Notion Certified Consultant and classically trained percussionist. And I absolutely love teaching people how to use Notion to support their creative journeys, or in this case, our personal productivity journeys. So in this intro masterclass, what we're gonna cover is a basic understanding of personal productivity, some of the benefits and challenges that we might see related to personal productivity, and an introduction to using Notion for productivity. But first, we're all here for Notion, right? So what exactly is Notion? I like to think of it as your set of digital Legos. This is where everyone's definition of Notion is slightly different depending on how you use it in your personal life or in your work life or even your student life. You can use it to take notes, organize projects, track to-dos, keep a journal, manage your business, and more. So let's dive into just a quick crash course about the key features in Notion, and then we'll dive into using it for productivity. 
One of the key features in Notion is understanding the workspace structure. With Notion, you have your account that you can access using your email, but then you have your workspaces that you can access for different uses. So you might have one for your business, you might have one for personal stuff, and you can access those different workspaces using a single login, or you can use multiple logins for multiple workspaces. It's all up to you. But once you get into Notion's workspace, it's important to understand how the structure works. And the structure includes team spaces, pages, and databases as kind of our highest level of architecture or building blocks. So once you understand how to create, organize, and navigate with these elements, Notion will open up a world of possibilities. Within Notion, it is built around the concept of blocks. So different types of blocks include text, headings, images, to-do lists, and more. And then we also have blocks that are more advanced blocks where you can embed a video or a code block or formula blocks. Once you understand a little bit more about how to add, format, and rearrange those blocks, then you can build your Notion workspace to suit your individual needs. With the Notion, we have pages which I like to think of pages as digital documents that serve as building blocks for organizing and storing your information. You can customize various blocks using text, images, headers, tables, and media files to create versatile and dynamic content. And with Notion, you have standalone pages, but you can also turn pages into contextual dashboards where you remix data that you have stored in databases. Or you can consider the individual database entries in a database as individual pages as well. With databases, they allow you to create structured collections of information. This is where you can create properties to customize the databases, but with each database entry, it is a standalone page as well. In databases, you can customize views, use filters to see different information at different times, and you can actually create pre-built templates in databases to make it really quick and easy to create formatted pages. Within Notion, they also have tons of options for embeds and integrations with other software. It, you can support content like Google Drive files, Figma designs, you can embed YouTube videos. With Notion, once you get in, you can use that slash command to start exploring some of those different integrations and see which ones are going to work best for you. With Notion, one of the cool things about it is its ability to allow you to collaborate with others. So you can share pages and workspaces with other people. You can set the permissions for each page, whether you give them view only access, comment only access, and it'll allow you to collaborate in real time using the at mention function, you can actually tag people and they'll get notified in their inbox in Notion whenever you tag them on a page or in a comment. With templates, this is where we have those built-in database templates. So you can create structured pages within your databases and you don't have to start from scratch every single time you add a new entry. One of the things that I love doing in my Notion workspace is creating a page template manager page where I have shortcut links to all of the different templates I have in my databases. As you can see, I have a lot. From there, Notion has a lot more advanced features, including their formulas and filters and databases. We have advanced filters and basic filters. You can create linked databases where you embed a view of a database onto another page. You can use rollup properties when you are creating related databases. You can create page templates similar to the ones in the databases, or one of the things I like to do is create a page or a dashboard as a template and then pop it in one of Notion's buttons. And then you can just create a new themed dashboard page with just a click of a button. It's one of my favorite hacks in Notion, actually. And all of those different features are going to allow you to tailor Notion to your specific needs. One of my other favorites are keyboard shortcuts. So those can actually significantly help speed up your workflow and make navigating easier. And in Notion's documentation, you can always pop in there to see their key sh keyboard shortcuts and check out cheat sheets for reference. Another really great thing about Notion is the community. The Notion community is just so vibrant and there are so many amazing people to learn from, share ideas with, and discover new use cases. 
So some of those resources are Notion Academy, some online tutorials, YouTube videos, and blogs for different insights, tips, and inspiration. Are you guys ready to start diving in and using Notion? If so, go ahead and hop on over to this link and I will copy it and pop it in the chat for everyone. That didn't copy the link. Okay, let's see if that does it. So go ahead and hop on over to that link and it's gonna take you to this template page in Notion. And in this page, we'll have, for some reason, the link preview isn't working here, but you'll have a copy to all of these slides and you can go directly to those slides using this link here. But the main thing I want to share is this little intro to productivity planner template that we're gonna use together. So I'll give everyone just a couple minutes to get in there and get everything duplicated into your Notion workspace. And then we'll go ahead and dive into actually using Notion and working on some of these tasks. So while everyone is getting into that link, Karsh, if you can go ahead and like copy that link in there a couple times for everyone, that would be awesome. It looks like it's actually a pinned link at the top of the chat. So if everyone, if you lose it in the chat, just go up to the top and you should see a pinned chat and that has the link in it right there. Okay. So while everyone is going in and getting their Notion template duplicated, I just want to touch on kind of the three key essentials to understanding and optimizing personal productivity. So those three key, I guess, components of productivity are task management, time management, and focus management. And if you have ADHD like me, focus management is one of the hardest ones to handle, let me tell you. So with task management, this is basically just the process of managing tasks throughout their life cycle, which includes planning, tracking, and execution. This can look a little bit different depending on your use for it. It might require something similar to like a Gantt chart where you want to see things in timeline view. It could be a simple task list. Or it could be a calendar showing all of your events that you have and you want to plan and keep track of them. Another key component to personal productivity is time management. So with time management is just the process of organizing and planning how much time you're going to spend on different activities. And within productivity, there are a lot of different options for how to do that. We can look at time blocking as an option or scheduling things out or even creating themed days, which is one of my favorite ways to look at time management where I have specific tasks that I achieve on specific days of the week so that each week I know exactly what I'm going to be focusing on for that day. Another important part of personal productivity is focus management. So focus management is just the process of setting priorities and taking steps to make sure that you focus on your most important tasks. And there are a lot of different ways to do this. Again, it's with personal productivity, one of the cool things about it is that it is personal to you. So personal productivity is going to look different for every single person that is using these different techniques. So with focus management, one of my favorite things that I like to do is actually set a timer. And one of my favorites here is this little like visual timer that I have where when I need to keep track of something or want to set myself a time, then I can set a timer and at a quick glance, I see exactly how much time I have left on it, which is just one of those ways. If you're ADHD, it's a really great hack to get yourself a visual timer. Another thing that I really like doing for focus is listening to focus music. And one of my favorites for that is Brain FM. So I listen to it almost every single day and I, it really helps me get in the zone. I see some other people out there in the chat. They love Brain FM. They love their timers. So you are my people. <laughs> All right. So I hope by now everyone's had a chance to get in there and get their template downloaded and maybe take a peek a little bit. But now let's talk about understanding personal productivity and what it actually means. So first, what is personal productivity to you? Go ahead and pop your responses in that chat. I'd love to hear what a few of you have to say. For me, personal productivity is 
just the ability to create, meaning, do meaningful work and stay inspired. So this is where one of my favorite mantras is developing a work-life art balance. As a musician, but also a small business owner, like I have a lot of different things that I'm trying to juggle at the same time. So personal productivity is what allows me to figure out how to manage all the different areas of my life and able to find that balance. So right, I'm going to read a couple of these. Personal productivity is creating space. Oh, no, where it go? <laughs> space to do the tasks that are most important. I love that one. Finishing what you planned and started. Doing the right thing on the right timeline. I like that one. So you guys have some really, really great ideas about what personal productivity already is, and I love that. So accomplishing meaningful work, getting work done efficiently, doing what you need to do, getting your most important tasks done with focus, and optimizing how you spend time and energy. These are just a few different definitions of what personal productivity is. So here we want to look at what personal productivity means in a professional setting. It can impact your performance and your value to the organization you work for. It can help you achieve goals and advance your career. And it also helps reduce stress and improves work-life balance. In my case, that work-life art. <laughs> Love, who is that? Matt, I don't know if I'm saying your name right, but Matt Trail. Let's not distract our ADHD sister. I love that. Thank you for trying not to distract me. Okay. So looks like the most questions that we have are just related to the template. Hopefully you guys are able to get that. Again, that like quick link is going to be bit.ly slash intro slash productivity. If you still need to hop in there and get that, that's the shortcut link. And now that we are talking a little bit about understanding personal productivity, I'm going to give you guys some homework. Together, we're going to create a list of your daily tasks and identify areas where you can improve productivity. So that is where in this template, there's this little intro to productivity planner. And this is where we're going to jump in and create your own daily task list. And in here, I gave you space to create tasks for each day of the week if you want to do that. Or we can also do just a simple task list if you're wanting to do that. So if you want to create your own simple task list, one of the things you can do is just maybe start another block down here. We can do simple task list. And I'm actually going to turn this into... If you highlight a block and then click on the six dots to the left of it, you can actually turn a block into a different kind of block. So let's do a heading and let's make it a blue background so it matches. Now, if you want to create a to-do list, all you need to do is either hit that slash command and select to-do list, or one of my favorite shortcuts is command option four creates a task list as well. For here, I have a little Pomodoro timer to help you out. What I want to do right now is just do a quick little five minutes to give you some time to actually create your task list. And if you want to do a daily task list, you can do that. Or if you want to do just a general simple task list, we just walked through how to go ahead and create one from scratch and we can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to leave this up on the screen and go ahead and hit that timer. I'm going to try to share audio through here. I uh, tested it earlier and couldn't quite get it to work, but we're going to try again and see if it does. If you're not hearing audio, then if you guys want to go jump over to brain.fm and pop on some of your own, feel free to do that. Okay. Looks like the audio is not working. So if you have a favorite playlist, go ahead and pop that on for five minutes and we'll walk, we'll go ahead and just create our own little task list. And if you need that link again, we do have that bit.ly link up here. So you can always type it into your search bar directly. So quick recap of instructions. All we're doing right now is we're sharing this intro to productivity planner. Uh, link is bit.ly slash intro dash productivity. And that's going to take you to this page here. Down over on this page, we have this intro to productivity planner, which we're using to run through our little activity here, which is this top one, just to create a list of your daily tasks. And then we can start identifying areas where you can improve productivity. 
I left the page accidentally restarted the timer. So we're going to go ahead and restart this. It's set for five minutes, but we're going to go ahead and stop it at two minutes so that we can move on to the next activity. So this block with the timer actually came from, if I go, it's this study with me grid feedy block, a little focus block. It's just a little Pomodoro timer that's a little widget embedded in Notion. So once you duplicate the template, you'll be able to see this intro to productivity planner page about halfway down. And look into this page, this is the one where you can actually make changes, come in here and add your daily tasks into your days of the week or create a simple task list and just create a list of everything. And that is what we're all working on right now. Anyone still having issues duplicating the template? And it looks like there are a handful of questions coming through. Let's see. I can't keep track of them in the chat, but if you do have a question, make sure to go over to that Q&A tab. That way we can address all of them once we get to the Q&A section. I just wanna make sure we have time to cover everything with everyone. Hard to keep track of everything in the chat because it moves so quickly. It looks like we've probably all had enough time to go ahead and start that list of daily tasks. One of the cool things with Notion and it being a block system is you can move things around. So if anyone was watching the screen when I was working on mine, you can see Tuesdays and Thursdays, my daily schedule is basically the same. So I do deep work, client projects in the morning, and I reserve afternoons for client meetings. It was something where I literally just highlighted it, duplicated the block, and dragged it down under Thursday. But we have a good starting point for personal productivity. Let's take a look at some of the benefits and challenges. With are tons of benefits and challenges to task management and time management. So one of the benefits is, of course, increased productivity and efficiency. One of the best benefits is reducing your stress and improving your focus and creating a better work-life balance. Of course, there are also challenges. So some of those are difficulty with prioritizing important tasks, getting distracted by notifications and messages, and any kind of lack of discipline or unclear goals, and then trouble managing multiple projects all at once. And one of the cool things with Notion is it can actually help you with all of those different things. And as we go through the rest of the Masterclass series, we will be talking about those different topics in a little bit more depth, like time management and goal setting and all of those different gems that you get with personal productivity. Let's jump in and on our next little challenge here. So what we wanna do is list three benefits and three challenges that are specific to your work environment. And that's what we have down here on this next section. Go ahead and list three benefits and three challenges specific to your work environment. And what I did here is I used what is called a callout block. I love callout blocks. They're one of my favorite design features in Notion. I use them everywhere. So I created a benefits callout block and a challenges callout block with these list blocks. So these are all just text type blocks in Notion. And if you want to change what it is, you can always highlight it, and then use that menu to change it into a different list type. So if you prefer numbered lists, you can change it to a numbered list. Or if you want it to be a to-do list, you can also turn it into a to-do list. So what if we, my favorites are bullet lists and to-do lists, but let's say we wanna turn this into a numbered list since we're doing three. All you need to do is just highlight the three blocks on those six dots, and now you can turn it into a numbered list. Feel free to play around on this template. It's your playground to do with what you want. Let's go ahead and take a few minutes to identify those three benefits and those three challenges. Keep an eye on the chat and see if I can answer any questions that happen to pop up in that chat that are quick answers and give everyone a chance to go ahead and list out three benefits and three challenges to your work environment. So... Let's see, Vanessa had a question about the uses for callout blocks. So callout blocks can be used for a lot of different things. One of my favorite use cases is as kind of a design feature. 
basically making a mood board or a block, blocking out your workspace or blocking out your dashboard page. Kind of like what I did here where I have this little benefit block and then the challenges block. It can also be used to bring attention to instructions or something that's outside of the regular text block. Kind of like what I did with these task instructions here. So these are both call out blocks. And another thing is if you just want to make a little pretty design thing. So one of my favorite quotes or mantras is that you are the artist of your own life. So don't hand the paintbrush to anyone else. And I like to share that with people just as a reminder that especially with personal productivity, you get to design what it is going to be for you. Question. So Morgan's asking about examples of benefits and challenges, whether it's a physical environment, work culture, or job specific. And for me, I am a basically solopreneur with a virtual assistant who works from home or when I'm traveling, works from wherever I happen to be that week. So sometimes one of my challenges in my work environment is my physical work environment. It might be changing depending on where I am for the week. So what I do to help balance that challenge is I will actually create kind of a startup and shutdown routine so that my mind at least gets a chance to get in and get focused, even if my physical surroundings are different. A big challenge of a lot of people with ADHD is not being able to focus in a cluttered work environment. So no matter where I am, I always make sure to declutter my workspace before I start working. And that helps. Someone's asking how to change the color of the icons. So one of the things that you can do there for callouts, if you want to change the color of the entire callout, you click on the entire block and then you can change the color. If you want it as a colored call out, then you change it to a background color. And if you want to change the color of the actual icon, you just click on the icon and you can to the color that you want and just pick on it as blue. Or let's say if we want to change it to gray, we can change these to gray. So in Notion, when it comes to changing font size with basic blocks, basic text blocks, it's just a single standardized font. You have different headings that you can select. So there's heading one, two, and three that will make text larger or smaller. For example, this is an example of heading one. But with Notion, it's all just one standard font size. But if it's too small for you, one of the things you can do is actually zoom in. It makes the font larger. So to zoom in, it's command and then the plus sign on a PC, it would just be control and that plus sign. And then if you want to zoom back out, you can hit control and that minus sign. Catching as many of those questions as I could, but it looks like we are, we have about 30 seconds left. So feel free to wrap things up and we'll take a look at the next. So one of the questions that we had come through is that Ishara keeps switching from tab to tab to tab and not accomplishing anything for hours. So how do you address something like that? That is definitely something that is related to focus and productivity. Someone was able to get music going. Thank you. <laughs> so focus, one of the things, something where you essentially need to build discipline if you're like tab switching frequently. And one of the ways that I like to do that is by using a timer to focus on one task, and then you can give yourself a reward at the end of it. And that will help you be more likely to complete that task before switching to the next thing. Because if you don't finish the task, then you don't get your reward. So using positive reinforcement and different tricks like that is really helpful for learning how to focus and Pick switch less or switch from tab to tab less. Another thing that could be helpful is using a web browser, kind of like Art, which allows you to create themed browser spaces. <laughs> Need a quick drink. Something like that might help you be able to stay focused on your task as you're working on it. Let's jump into the next task. And then at the end, we're going to take a little bit more time for some Q&A.
if we're looking at Notion for productivity specifically, we can use a lot of those features that we've already shared in that little template so far. And some of those key features are to-do lists. You can create calendar views if you're doing a to-do list as a tasks database. Use tables to track projects and tasks. Again, if you're using those databases in Notion, you can use tagging for organizations and use integrations with other apps and just so many different ways that you can use Notion for task management. Using it specifically for productivity, then using just a simple to-do list like what we've already created or creating a simple calendar view to set up some time blocking or even setting up a project dashboard to track your progress or organize notes and so forth. So what we're going to do now is set up a basic task list in Notion to help you keep track of all of your to-dos. are a couple different ways we can do this. One of the things that I like doing or that you can do in Notion is if you're creating a new page and take a look at the built-in Notion templates. So Notion actually has a pretty decent to-do list and projects and tasks or projects, tasks, and sprints if your workspace workplace utilizes sprints in your project planning. So if we want to do just a basic to-do list, we can select that one. Or if we want to do something that is managing your projects and tasks all together, this is a really great template to start out with in Notion. But for now, let's just go ahead and do a simple to-do list. And it's going to create that new space for you. This one is a great place to start because you can come in here and you can see you can assign that task to a person. You can set the status. This one, it has a built-in Notion AI summary. And you can also set the due date. Once you get in there, if you want to customize different properties, you can just click this plus button over here and create a new property for your tasks database. Is everyone kind of following along okay now? If you are, throw a quick thumbs up in that message. Okay. We had a couple questions about how to create the to-do list again. There are a couple different ways you can do it. If you want to use one of Notion's built-in templates, over in your sidebar on the left here, you can actually come in here and if you're in a team space, hit the add a page or a template plus mark. If you hit the one next to a team, next to where it says team spaces, it's going to give you a new team space. But if you want to create a new page or in this case, a new database, click that little plus button and instead of blank page, select browse templates. There you'll be able to select that to do list. So now that we have this to-do list created and you can see some of those different properties that are already in here, with this as a database, you can actually see how you have the different database properties that are assigned to this task. But then you can see down here, you can actually just type in and use the regular Notion text blocks because there, it's this task is an entire page in and of itself. So if you have a task that's kind of a more detailed one, you can always write the simplified task title as the title and then add additional details in the body of the database entry. If we want to add additional properties, there are two ways you can do that. You can just click this plus button on table view or if you click these three dots, this is where you can further edit your database. This is where you can go to the properties tab and add additional properties. You can set filters. So if you only want to see things that are not done yet, you can set a filter to only show your tasks that are not done. And then we can set a sort filter. So if you want to sort things by due date to see what's due most recently or what's coming up next, we can sort by due date. Also set up grouping. So if you want to group things by status, if you select status, you can see you can see everything that hasn't been started yet, what's in progress now, what's done, and what might be archived. If you decide that you don't want to group things after all, you can always go back to that group tab and hit none. Keep your list and table views from grouping in that way. You also have board view which is where you can see things in a Kanban board style. 
So if you want to see them by status, you can do that. If you want to set up a board based on who it's assigned to, you can do that as well. You can set up grouping by any of the status properties that we have here. So if we wanted to do it by due date, you can see what's coming up tomorrow, what's in the next seven days, and so forth, or anything in the next 30 days. So it's a great way to see kind of more high-level grouping. And again, because Notion is so customizable, you can just play around with this and see which views you like the best. We have the ability to turn subtasks on or off and set up dependencies. And this is efficient if you are planning things out using Timeline View, where when one task is dependent on another task being completed, if that task runs late, then dependencies will automatically shift the date for you, or you can set it to where it doesn't automatically shift. So these are a great thing to play around with, especially if you're doing a lot of team planning and you have a lot of people working on a lot of different things where one team is dependent on another team. Then we also have automations, and this is where you can play around with some of the automation settings use one of the triggers where let's say when a status is marked as done we can automatically archive it so just a few of the different options that you can play around with in database view but let's say we want to add additional views because right now we have the table view we have board view but you can also create different types of views and the cool thing with this template is you can actually create one by people by who it's assigned to you can set it up to where it's filtered to just show everything assigned to you. Set up a calendar view so you can see what it looks like on an actual calendar. Or we can even set up a timeline view. And this is going to be kind of like that Gantt chart style view in here. And with Notion, as you can see, when you come in here and create new view types, you have the ability to choose from tables, boards, timeline, calendar, list, and gallery. And this is where you can come in and just play around with it a little bit. That's the cool thing about Notion databases is the core data, the core information stays the same no matter what view you're looking at it in. But brain is different. So one person might like using a Kanban board for managing their tasks, whereas another person might prefer seeing it in timeline view or calendar view if they're very time oriented. Their Notion is great for going in and playing around and just figuring out what works best for you. Well, we do have about 12 minutes left, so I wanna make sure to take the rest of the time to cover any specific questions that we have. So if you have questions, hop on over to that Q&A and I will do my best to get through everything until we're done. And if for some reason I don't get through it all, here's how you can stay in touch with me. So, oh, question from Angel. She's asking how I suggest using the template for a weekly view. What, with this particular template, I would doing it on that to-do list. There are a couple of different ways that you can do it. You can create a new page, a new copy of it each week and just start from a blank slate. The things that I like to do is either reset the whole thing or you can add new weeks Go over here. But if I go back to this page, here, here, here we go. The thing that I used to do is I used to have a archive page when I started out with just a very basic, simple weekly planner like this. With Notion, the beauty of it is it can grow with you. So if you're overwhelmed by setting up a task database and projects databases and you don't want to dive into that yet, starting out with just a very simple to-do list like this is a great way to start. But if you need to kind of reset every week, one of the things that I like to do for that is I actually would create a new page, make it my archive page, add a little trash can that this is the archive page. Oh, let's say I'm ready to start fresh. I can just like anything that has been completed that I am done with, I can just drag everything over into this archive. And that's a great way to Start simple and not overwhelm yourself, but still get rid of the completed items and keep them from cluttering up your space. You can always just start with a new to-do. Let's see. 
this. So here's another great question. And this is about challenges. One of the challenges that this person sometimes faces when working from home is getting motivation. Are there any notion features or personal tips to help with motivation? So some of my favorites there. Thank you, Akarsh, for popping that up there. <laughs> well, some of my favorites are, again, using this little timer. Little timer. It's from Time Timer. Um, it's great because it's just so simple. Sometimes it's nice going analog for things. And with Notion, I have like a Notion startup routine that I do. And one of the things is I always start with my today page. So this helps keep me on track. My default page whenever I open my main Notion workspace. And this is where I can see everything that I have on my to-do list for the day, quick access to my notes. And then I can see a quick overview of my themes for each day of the week. So Notion can help support you with your motivation and being able to open up a page and see exactly what I need to focus on for that day is a great way to help motivate you. If personal things like, again, I love setting this thing where I'm having a hard time just getting started, then I set it for five minutes and I say, okay, I'm just going to do it for five minutes and then we're good. For most people, getting started is the hardest part. Once you get started on something, usually you don't have a hard time continuing doing it. So any little hacks or tricks to help you get started is a great way to do that. Another thing that I love is setting like Pomodoros or using focus music to help you focus. So when would I recommend a simple task list list versus a daily task list? So if you do a lot of repetitive things on a daily basis, having a daily task list is great because you can track those things each day that you're doing them. And I don't know if you're anything like me, but I love check marking something is done. Like it gives me that little dopamine boost that makes my heart happy and keeps me motivated to keep going. So if you do a lot of repetitive tasks on a day-to-day -day basis, having a weekly list where you can see each task list for each day allows you to check them off each day that you're doing them versus having a simple task list where you just have a running task list of everything that you need to do if you just have things that aren't necessarily tied to a specific date. But it's like, this needs to get done eventually. It's great to have on a simple task list so that it's there and you have that reminder. And it's not just floating around in your head. We can get out of our heads and onto paper or into Notion. The more we can focus on what we actually need to do rather than worrying about what it is that we think we need to do. So quick question about the tasks headers in this template. These are callout blocks. And with the callout blocks, you can go over here and set the background color to different colors, which is great. And you can also change that icon. In these headers, same thing. You can click on those six bars, click color. And then if you want a background color, just select the background. If you want to change it to a default color, then you can change it to the regular color and it changes the look a little bit, but different ways to play around with it and set it up however it's going to work best for you. Another great suggestion is if you turn the weekly task list into a button in Notion. And that's something where you can just create a new button, which would be use the slash command and I just start typing button and insert blocks. And if you wanted to do that, you could actually just drag all of these in here and I would maybe format it a little bit prettier, but you can drop them in there out of order. <laughs> Just as an example of how we can do that is you can pop those all in there. When you click that new button, it creates your weekly task list and you can create a new one for each week. Quick hack. We do have about five minutes left, so I'm going to get through as many questions as I can. Utkarsh, are we OK to go over a little bit to finish answering questions or do we need to hard stop? No, we can't go want to stay and hang around with me I am down to stay and answer as many questions as we have so one of the other questions we had was what do I mean by work environment and they're asking does that mean digital tools workspace etc which technically your work environment includes all of those things 
If you work in a physical office, then it might be your office or your cubicle, your desk space. It could be the digital tools that you're using. It could be the people that you're working with. Again, it's going to be very unique to each person. And figuring out what your work environment means to you is going to be the first step in figuring out the benefits and the challenges so that you can figure out what's going to work best to optimize or how you're going to optimize those benefits and maybe figure out a solution to those challenges. Respect to our environment, should we be distinguishing between our virtual environment versus our physical environment? Very personal. So if you want to distinguish your work environment, your physical environment, and your virtual environment, I think that's great. If it makes more sense to keep those two things separate in your brain, then that's awesome. I kind of think of it all as a blend together because I am technically a digital nomad. So my virtual work environment is about 90% of my work environment and 90% of what I have control over. So I like blending the two together because that's what works for me. But that's a question that you should ask yourself and de decide which makes more sense to you if you want to keep them separate or kind of blend it all together. Stupid questions. Christina asks, when you select all three list items, she can't seem to select them all at once. So if you're talking about the list items inside these call-out blocks, that's where it can get a little bit tricky. With Notion, if you are in here and you're trying to like select them like this, you can see it's going to just move around, move that entire call-out block around. So the hack that I use, if you, if you go a little bit outside the call-out block and start highlighting, you can highlight all three together. So you should be able to see how my little highlight blob starts outside the callout and then covers the elements that I want to highlight within that callout block. Same thing over on this other side, just go a little bit outside the callout and then highlight all three. If you want to move the entire callout block around, you can just grab anywhere on the title part of the callout block. If you do it down here, then it's just gonna prompt you to start typing in those spaces. Really good question from I hope I pronounced that correctly, is asking if the blocks are the lowest level entities in Notion and databases are the highest. So it depends on how you're looking at it. When I'm looking at structure at page or the workspace level structure, then the team space level structure. And from there, you can have pages or databases as kind of the highest level, but it depends on how you're using them. If at a page block, it's a page, but then you can also turn a page block into a dashboard where you can embed links of databases. And this is where Notion can be a little bit to wrap your head around. It's to create contextual dashboards, which is exactly what my today page over here is in this workspace. I have a call out block that I embedded linked views of my tasks database in here. So I can see different items between views. And this is just a list view of a linked view of my tasks database with my notes and ideas. This links to my notes and ideas database, which shows me like grouped notes that I have pinned in these different areas. I think of like to use Notion and things with Notion, or I guess use Notion as a functional tool is I store anything that is data or information in a database. And then I use a contextual dashboard like this today page to remix everything in those databases. Databases and pages are both the highest level structure because with databases, you can have full page databases or you can have inline databases that live on a page or you can have linked views of a database that live on a page. And with those pages, if you're using like remixing the information from a database, I think of those pages as contextual dashboards instead of pages. But then in like in my notes database, I'm in here and you can see is actually like there's content in the note. This is a good example when I have like Unicode characters that I can never ever remember the keyboard shortcuts for. 
So I just have them saved in Notion and I can come in here and just quickly copy and paste them elsewhere. Techniques have you found effective to juggle tasks around meetings and events on my schedule? Example, moving a task to another day or blocking time from like Calendly to focus. Blocking time on your calendar to focus. So one of the things that I do, looking at my day-to-day -day structure, I have the <clears throat> tasks that I focus on each day of the week. So Monday is usually spent on planning out my week, admin, and learning. I like starting off with like something new and exciting. So I love learning new things. So I keep Monday kind of light and fresh and fun because Mondays my brain has a hard time getting started. So I don't want to start doing really deep focus work until Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I focus on client work and or Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, I focus on client work. And I'll do like deep work sessions in the morning so that I can focus. And then in the afternoons, I'll schedule meetings so that I am not, I get really drained after meetings sometimes. So I want to save those for the end of the day. Because if I have a really difficult meeting first thing in the morning, I'm going to have a hard time focusing for the rest of the day. So part of that is figuring out how your brain works, how your it's like when you feel the most motivated, when you feel the least motivated, and then working with those natural rhythms. If you're a morning person and you're most focused first thing in the morning, do all your hard stuff first thing in the morning. If you're not a morning person and you don't really start getting into the groove until early afternoon, early afternoon to do some of your deep work and your focus projects. But figuring out what works for you and playing around and experimenting is how you're going to figure out how to set up your weekly schedule to best support your needs. Here is a, another really good question about Notion. Megan gets confused about nesting. So you have to create a separate page database like this and then nest it in another page. So she's asking if like this page that we created over here, this is a standalone database. But if I wanted to nest it in another page, then I could go down here. Jobs. I wanted to move it over to this page. I can actually take the entire database and I can nest it in a page. Or it can be a high-level page in your sidebar. It just depends on how you want to organize that information. So if I moved it over here, then it's going to show up as a page within a page. You can go into that page and see it like that. Another option we could do is if you click on those six dots, you can copy link. And then here it says create link view of database. And that's where you can create a linked view of this original source database down there. You see how there's the little arrow where it says tasks? That is because it is just a copy of this database. You can also take this database and turn it into an inline database. So it's a database within the page. It's not a standalone database anymore. But this is still a linked view of the database that's linking back to this original database. So databases are a little complicated. They can be a little, a little much to wrap your head around. But once you have that moment it's kind of like walking through the door in the wizard of oz where all of a sudden everything is bright and colorful and cheery and it just makes sense that is a common thing that a lot of people have with notion is you reach a point in your notion journey where all of a sudden things just click so if you're a little frustrated now it's okay everyone has been there i have been there trust me but you will get there and it will click if you Take the time to keep learning and join us on the rest of this masterclass series. So a lot of these, like there is, there are still a lot of questions. I don't think we're going to be able to get through them all. Some of them might be covered in upcoming sessions, especially related to questions about to productivity and different productivity techniques. So what we are going to do, we're probably going to wrap it up. And then Ukarsh, if you want to like jump in, we can go ahead and wrap. Question. Yeah.
Yeah, thanks, Artasia. And as she said, so we have a lot of questions, and to be very honest, this is the first time I'm seeing such a big barrage of questions up here that I'm going to note all of these questions. Most of these questions are actually going to be answered in the upcoming sessions. In case if you still don't any of your answers, don't feel worried. I will make sure that all of your answers get answered, questions get answered. If not, we're going to arrange up a follow up AMA session just after the series ends. And we can even do it multiple of those so that all of your questions get seen. So don't worry about it. And thanks again, Tasia, for joining us today, especially joining in when you're suffering from a throat infection and still making it up. So I really appreciate that. And I'm sure everyone would have now realized several new methodologies to unlock higher productivity. Thanks for joining us today in the first session. See you at the same time on Wednesday. Going to get started with goal setting and prioritization. Till then, you can connect with the fit learners in the networking launch. You can even ask doubts or even solve them if you are four or five related as per your skill level. And feel free to share learnings on socials using the stack ADP list X notion. And you might even get featured in one of our official hands. Thanks again and have a great week, everyone. See you on Wednesday.